Bueno, vamos a seguir eh, con una presentación de Luis Pociñón, espero haber pronunciado bien. Eh, sí, sí. Luis trabaja como software engineer, network software engineer en Cloudflare. Eh, nos va a hablar del DNS 1.1.1.1, dije 4, ¿no? IPv4. Eh, así que lo recibimos a, a Luis para esta presentación. Gracias. Buen día. Okay, so there was a small change. I was supposed to do the RPKI presentation uh, right now, but uh, we inverted it, uh, so I get more time. Um, so it's going to be at 3.45. So I'm just going to talk about the um, DNS resolver and all the noise on the internet that we got. So, um, so just um, to remind you, uh, who is Cloudflare? So we have we are a CDN, Content Delivery Network. We have 150 point of presence. Uh, we present in more than 72 countries. We have a data center in Buenos Aires. Uh, we are present on more than 186. Uh, internet exchange, we're always trying to add more. We serve around 10% uh, of the internet, the web traffic. E we see regular DDoS attacks, a uh, lot of traffic. Uh, we serve billion DNS requests per day. Are you talking? Yes. Um, so back in April, we, we, have, we announced 1.1.1.1, .1 .1 .1, our DNS resolver, open, uh, private, very fast, served in 150 data centers. And, oh, oh, still no. <laughs> um, so just how we work, uh, we filter, we are proxy, so we cache the content locally and we serve it from 150 point of presence. So a user is gonna, if, if the data center has the content, it's just gonna load very fast. Otherwise, we forward the request to the origin server. So you already use Cloudflare. We have six million websites, six million clients. So who am I? Um, I'm Louis, uh, I'm a network and data and software. Uh, I used to be in London, now I'm in San Francisco. And I'm, I work on the data, on the data in Cloudflare. I just gather data, I try to anal analyze it. I released a few open source tools to um, use the, um, to collect flows, like NetFlow, SFlow, and BGP. So to, the second is a library, and the first one is a collector. Feel free to use it, um, I love to have feedback, and most of the data from this presentation is actually coming from these tools. So, um, so the AP blocks, uh, the AP blocks of 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1 are blocks that got landed to us by APNIC for a DNS resolver project. So it was in a partnership. Um, and we're gonna talk about internet noise because these prefixes are vanity prefix. They are known to receive a lot of unwanted traffic. Uh, I'm just gonna explain a bit after why, why they receive that. It's, it's mostly misconfiguration and misuse. Some people trying to use us as a proxy and people also misconfigure internal use. So the routing history of this prefix, um, since it was a lot of, it received a lot of unwanted traffic, you only, could, if you announced it, you had to be ready to have a lot of capacity to, to get all the traffic. But some tests were around like 10 years ago uh, by, uh, by uh, Ripe and Merit, when they, they wondered if they would allocate this prefix. Uh, so they decided, okay, we're not gonna allocate this prefix to end users because that would be very unfair. They would get uh, too much traffic. And Google for a while announced this prefix too. And since we started our, um, we started announcing it in March. We started uh, doing tests in March, trying to uh, see if there was any problem before actually saying on 1st of April 2018 um, that this was a DNS resolver, just like 8.8.8 or Quan 9. So what's nice, in the past, uh, people 
so that 1.1.1.0 slash 24 in 2010 received more than 100 megabits per second, it actually overflowed the port. And back in uh, 2014, uh, the whole slash 8 was announced uh, by APNIC, I think, and it got 100 to 1 gigabits per second, once again, maximizing the ports. But when we announced it, we got 10 gigabits per second continuously. And we haven't, re it was just like this. Um, no, no DNS request served, only 10 gigabits per second, including 1 gigabits per second on 1.1.1.1. So that means it was all around the world, uh, but if you sum it, 10 gigabits per second. Um, so not only um, some data centers were receiving a few gigs, some of those few hundred. So we could actually announce it and uh, respond to queries. So what, what's inside? Um, we see mostly TCP traffic, HTTP proxy, um, every port that ever existed for uh, HTTP. So port 80, port 8080, port 443, everything. Um, it was like proxy request, um, so probably misconfigured proxy. Uh, we still receive some DNS traffic, um, like on port 53, um, and people also send us syslogs. So <laughs> this is a small issue because if you misconfigure it, if you misconfigure your, your firewall, you suddenly send us all your access logs to us. Um, which we don't want to see, and we actually drop the packets. We don't look at it. Um, so yeah, there's that. And we also noticed that we 1.0.0.19 uh, .0 was actually receiving a lot of traffic, DNS traffic, so a lot of packets. And we actually wondered, like, what is it? It's like port 53. It's, it was regular proper DNS traffic, re, uh, real request, and it was TP-Link. Um, so TP-Link had uh, the equipment, the device was uh, misconfigured and actually um, forwarded some requests. So now we were receiving it. There was usually nothing behind 1.0.0.19, but now there's us. And the source, so where, where is all of that coming from? So to uh, the max, the maximum, like the biggest was China. China with 96%, and then US, 2%, and the rest of the world was like accounting for like 2% of the traffic. So still like more than nine gigabits per second from China. Um, so we also noticed like, okay, over time, what are the patterns? And there are still that we still cannot explain. Um, the first one is an increase, like it's on four IP, there's this daily increase from five to eight, eight to 10, and it goes like this every day, like you can overlap the days and it's just gonna be always the same pattern. So it's definitely automatic, it's coming from China. So it looks like a load balancer, but we never knew why, why it was coming from, where it was coming from. So we still don't know actually, that's kind of, it still stays a mystery. Um, we also noticed some short bursts. So can I have like a, just a small configuration? It seemed like DDoS, DDoS attacks, but not targeted to us, it just like started on 1.1.1 and it shifted to some other things. So we saw NTP and we saw 1.1 one, one, uh, memcache. So it was like burst, burst like every day, not at the same time, just like starting. So ideally we, we suppose that it was like a, bo a botnet bootstrapping itself on us while it gets the actual target IP, it was using 1.1.1. .1 .1. um, so we suppose maybe misconfigure network device for NTP. Um, so, and one which was also funny is uh, we also received DHCP, people sending us DHCP on 1.1 and on port 67 and 68. This is traffic, like definitely there's something wrong, like you should not route DHCP outside your network. And around the legitimate traffic, because before we launch, uh, we still receive some DNS, so the TP link one, but how much, uh, we still do it on analysis, uh, it still received uh, some amount of traffic, like some DNS request on 1.1.1, which was legitimate. Um, so what's changed over the last 10 years? In the previous studies from 10 years ago at Nanog, um, there was, uh, it was mostly IPERF traffic and some RTP, I think. Um, 
And apparently, now we have 10 to 20 more times done through the study. So I ran the numbers, uh, the legitimate traffic that we receive for the DNS accounts for like 7 to 13 percent, depending if you take into account packets or bytes. And this is very low for, so only 10 percent, like 90 percent of junk is reaching us. Regarding the availability of this prefix, so there's, there was a traffic that um, we didn't want and we still received, but there was traffic that we wanted and we didn't have. So this part, just like for talking about that, um, a colleague actually did a really good job at like um, responding to requests, trying to contact every operators to just fix the routing. So we used a lot of Atlas probes. So uh, Cloudflare and many others like use Atlas probes. So if you have uh, connectivity, especially in Latin America, Africa, or Southeast Asia, please put some probes because we use them a lot to um, do some tests, to do some reachability tests. We use so many credits in like RIPE Atlas to just run those tests, see if you could access, if anyone could access 1.1.1. And this allowed us before we actually received the real uh, comments. So we realized there was many neural, neural routes. People configured 1.1 in their routers, the routers did not contact us. And sometimes it was just the equipment or people misusing it. So some people were, oh, I can connect to 1.1.1, but it's an FTP server, it's not DNS. So more than 30 major internet service provider all around the world. Um, some of you actually contacted us. Um, thank you for that. Uh, many peop uh, people know routed the IP. Uh, one dot one slash thirty is like a favorite point to point, and you know the whole prefix used for internal purposes. Most of the time, it was fixed in less than a week uh, when we show, oh, we actually own this IP, and people will use this service behind us. Uh, we also got some non-response, but we're still trying to reach to them. And so, a bit on why why this prefix was misused um, in the documentation. There are IP prefix that are dedicated to documentation or even um, private address. So IRFC 5737 or IFC 1918 sets a range of IPs just for this case. Um, so for instance, these prefixes. But when you read like a famous uh, book, you realize, oh, you should use this uh, fictitious IP address, which is 1.1.1. Never going to be anything on it, sure. And you know, it's a one dot one dot one two two dot two dot two dot two two dot two dot two is like Orange France. They actually also receive a lot of prefix, uh, a lot of traffic on this prefix. And this is due to this default configuration that we receive or do not receive the traffic we want. Some people were like, sure, um, <laughs> just use that. Nobody cares. Um, so we saw that on the forum. Uh, TP-Link also, TP-Link is like, it's not the first time they, they have this kind of misconfiguration. So there was an issue with, in Japan, with NTP server. TP-Link actually embedded the IP address, hard-coded, and don't, don't hard-code. They hard-coded the address of the NTP server in a university in Japan, which means it was, it saturated their infrastructure. And in conclusion, so more like practice, many different type of configuration. Um, it's, if you misconfigure, be careful not leaking private data. Do not send us your syslogs. We don't want to see them. Um, the HTTP data, why do you want that? It's, it's also a risk. Like, we could respond to that. We weren't going to do that, but do not send it to us. And many unknown traffic, but I'm talking about 10 gigabits per second. So obviously we maintain privacy, we just throw away all the data, uh, but not everyone else would do the same. So please check your configuration, remove the IP address you don't know, and use the non-routed IP addresses. When I say non-routed, I mean the, the documentation one. Do not take any prefix, just assume any, any prefix that is not reserved could be uh, allocated for future use, especially since uh, we run out of IPv4 addresses. And see, and just be vigilant about your own network. 
Do you have any questions? Yes. Hi, Mauro Fontana from CenturyLink. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize for my English. <laughs> so I want to say that uh, for us, for a service provider, oh, we saw this a lot about um, technical guys that they are doing some tests and they usually like four or five times a year, maybe mm -hmm. more. I don't want to give that. But uh, they configure some maybe point-to-point uh, -point test. They want to do a ping in our backbone. Mm -hmm. um, they, it's, it's knowledge. They, they don't know what, what, they, what that, team, that, uh, that configuration may impact. So we have the distribution in BCP. So some tests, they say, OK, it's 1.1.1 1 .1 point. It's, it's, I'm not going to affect anyone. I, I don't know. Happen with one one one. Happen with uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes eight eight eight, and mm -hmm. that's a big issue. So eight 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 is is like a lot of traffic, mm -hmm. hundred of traffic. But one uh, uh, is not a question. It's just a <laughs> comment. <laughs> just to say, okay, uh, this is one of happens. Big providers yes. have these issues. Just uh, technical guys doing the test, configuring one IP address and the other IP address. Mm -hmm. I dash uh, 30, and mm. they say it's not going to happen. It's not going to, to mm. it's not harmful. So that's all. That's yeah. Thanks for sharing. For, for, your, for your presentation. Thank you. And Doug Midori from Oracle. Uh, comment on did the, uh, all that junk traffic have any mm -hmm. effect on the, uh, the DNS operation uh, mm -hmm. running off the IP, like being able to answer all the queries? Like crash? So, your question, does it impact? Yeah, did it so, impact? Um, we, we distribute a lot. So in the end, um, on the edge, we filter most of the junk traffic. Um, a DNS is very little. In it's less, than, less than a few, uh, it's probably around like a gigabit per second. I'm not sure. I haven't checked the numbers, but uh, it's still distributed uh, uh, for over a lot of machines. So. It tends to create some errors in our log, especially since um, some packets were actually, uh, uh, it, it did not come from real queries. It was just, it's still, it was still DNS, but it was malformed DNS, so this raised some errors. So we had to do some tunings on the alerting to not be uh, drowned under so many um, uh, alerts, because like, oh, malformed packet, malformed packet. But in the end, no, we, we managed to still serve uh, all DNS queries. OK, yeah, thanks. Hello. Uh, okay. I'm Douglas from, BP, from BPF. Uh, if I'm not right, uh, wrong, uh, DNS uh, Cloudflare provides also the service pro to DNS over HTTPS. Mm -hmm. uh, this address, this Anycast address, is used for that kind of service? or uh, there is another pool for that. I'm sorry, um, we use it for? Uh, DNS over HTTPS. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. This the service of the DNS over HTTP, HTTP is provided from that, that, that address of any cast or another address? Uh, yes, it's provided from this IP and I think some others as well. So uh, yes, you just, uh, it's among the same traffic. Uh, the, mm -hmm. all, the, all the ports of the services, ones all, all, all any casts. Uh, everything is any cast, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, si no hay más preguntas, le damos un fuerte aplauso a Luis. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias.